Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss IP version 6 and the major changes compared to IP version 4. We are aware that IPv4 has been in use for over 40 years. According to the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, the last batch of slash 8 public IP addresses were leased out, leaving fewer than 10% of unused IPv4 addresses by the year 2010. Even though we have close to 4.3 billion IPv4 addresses available, the rising popularity of mobile device US and IoT meant that IPv4 should have been exhausted quite some time ago. Yet, we continue to use IPv4 today, thanks largely to private IP addresses and network address translation. These mechanisms have saved a significant number of public addresses for networking device US. Network engineers recognized the impending shortage of IPv4 addresses. As a result, they designed a new protocol called IPv6 to address the issue of IP exhaustion. Before delving deeper into IPv6, many might wonder, why wasn't there an IPv5? IPv5 was an experimental protocol developed for streaming voice and video, primarily by Apple. However, Due to its retention of the same 32-bit design as IP version 4, IPv5 was never adopted as an official IP standard. IPv6 was introduced in 2012, prompted by network engineers' realization in 2010 that less than 10% of IPv4 addresses remained available. IPv6 employs a 128-bit addressing system, supporting over 340 undecillion. That's 340 trillion trillion trillion. With the design of IPv6, the IP address authorities plan to phase out the use of private IP addresses, a staple of the IPv4 system. The intention is for every device, whether it's a computer, mobile phone, or IoT device, to have an IP address that can directly access the Internet. This would eliminate the need for network address translation processes in routers or firewalls get away with the added layer of IP conversion. As of today, IPv4 is still in use. However, Internet Service Providers, ISPs, are gradually transitioning from IPv4 to IPv6. Many routers are now supporting dual IP version assignment to aid in this transition. IPv4 utilizes a 32-bit addressing system, structured in four octets. While this format simplifies the representation of the address, the limited length restricts the total number of addresses to approximately 4 billion. Recognizing the need for a substantially larger pool of IP addresses to support future growth over the next three to five decades, network engineers designed IPv6 with an expanded address length. While the notation of IPv6 might initially seem surprising or complex, the move to a 128-bit addressing system was imperative. It was designed to accommodate the explosive growth in device us, anticipating over 40 billion mobile and IoT devices today. While IPv6 boasts a lengthy address structure for allocation, engineers have developed methods to simplify its representation. To make the address more concise, any leading zeros within a segment can be omitted and consecutive sections of zeros can be replaced with a double colon. However, this double colon can be used only one time in an entire address to avoid ambiguity. The first example is wrong due to two double colon in the addressing format. Computer will not accept with this IP assignment. The second example is correct. Only one double colon can be representing the entire zero. The next zero can be truncated to be single zero, but not double colon again. And the front zero can be cutting down with only three digit number. Always exercise caution when assigning IPv6 addresses to devise us to ensure they adhere to these conventions. IPv6 operates on a distinct addressing model compared to IPv4. In today's internet architecture, most Internet Service Providers, ISPs, are equipped to allocate IPv6 addresses to Internet routers. Once a router receives its IPv6 address from the ISP, there's no need for network address translation to convert. 
since there is no private IP needs to be configured in localhost device. In the example, ISP assigns an IPv6 address with a slash 64 prefix to our internet router. We effectively have another slash 64 segment available to designate to host IPv6 addresses. A standout feature of IPv6, Stateless Address Auto Configuration, SLOC, streamlines this process. With SLOC, the prefix is auto-negotiated with all connected host devices, informing them of the designated IPv6 address range. These devices then use their MAC addresses to automatically generate the remaining segments, completing the IPv6 address configuration. With the SLOC method in place, network configuration becomes seamless. We don't have to concern ourselves with manually setting up IP version 6 addresses in our network. Even in the absence of a DHCP server, IP version 6 addresses are auto-configured. There are several types of IPv6 addresses we will discuss. Global Unicast is analogous to IPv4 public IP addresses. These are reachable on the internet. They start with a 2000 slash 3 prefix. Unique local address beginning with an FC00 slash 7 prefix. These addresses function similarly to IPv4 private IP address. They are meant for local network usage and are routable within that private network. Link local addresses start with an FE80 slash 10 prefix. Windows systems today automatically configure themselves with a link local IPv6 address. Devise us can communicate with other link local addresses on the same network without further configuration. However, unlike unique local addresses, link local addresses are not routable beyond their local network. Anycast is a novel address type not present in IPv4. With Anycast in IPv6, Multiple devices can be configured with the same IPv6 address. When a host sends a request to this address, the nearest device responds. For instance, if two file servers in different data centers share the same IPv6 address, a user in data center A would communicate with the server in data center A due to the proximity. Anycast also offers a redundancy advantage. If the server in data center A fails, Requests are automatically routed to the server in data center B. This diversity in IPv6 address types offers flexibility and functionality, enhancing network design and communication. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.